What is this reality? In this video, I'm going to tell you. Welcome to another episode of Book Therapy. Today's book is a book about science. Weird. You may be wondering how a book about science could be therapeutic. Well, I'll get to that. But you should know that this book shattered my mind. And the book that I'm talking about is Carlo Rivelli's Reality Is Not What It Seems. This is a book that explores the history of our understanding of physics from thousands of years ago up until the quantum theories of today. Carlo Rivelli says, this is not a book about certainties. It is about the adventure of moving toward the unknown. It's true. When you really try and think about what this stuff means and the implications of it, it's wild. And it brought me to a conclusion that I'm excited to share with you. From Newton's understanding, the world existed with space, time, and particles. And then after that, Faraday and Maxwell proposed that it was space, time, fields, and particles. Einstein shifted that from space, time, fields, and particles to space, time, fields and particles. What's amazing to see throughout history, you have the most brilliant people in the world who are wrong sometimes, but who are also pushing the limits of our understanding. Because after Einstein also proposed the theory of general relativity in 1915, which was then adjusted by quantum mechanics more recently, and now the studies and theories that go along with quantum gravity. Space, time, fields, particles, all these things have now coalesced into what scientists think may be one reality. Covariant quantum fields. Quantum particles that rely on each other to interact and exist as a web throughout our whole reality. Have I lost my mind? <laughs> kind of sounds like the matrix. Covariant quantum fields all together as one. And this is the spectacular idea that I wanted to share. If all of this exists as moving parts under one umbrella, then it seems that we are both separate and one at the same time. It's, the law, man. it's almost like a scientific endorsement, almost, of non-dualism. From the micro level to the macro, from the quantum to the universal, fractally existing all together. But then how do you bridge the gap between an ungraspable smallness and an ungraspable bigness to the experience of life that lies between for us? Because whatever this reality is, we're living it. Einstein said, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one, because it's all an illusion. Time does not exist based on these quantum theories. It's only a function of particles interacting together time then ensues. And if time doesn't exist, what does that mean for everything else? What does that mean for our interpretation of these events that are happening in our lives? And what really matters? If it all exists together, then our interpretation of what's happening is just that, an interpretation. And how much time should we then devote to having fun and enjoying whatever this experience is. It reminds me of Naval said this in his book in the Almanac. What if this time that we're experiencing now is our promised heaven and we're squandering it? I've done plenty of that. With working through depression, anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, even with meditation and other therapies, I tend to get lost in dark thoughts. I have wasted a lot of time being sad and being nervous and being scared. So what is reality? Is it science? Is it God? Is it some squid kid playing a Sims game on his computer? We don't know. This brings me to another quantum physicist, Michio Kaku, and an interview I saw where he was talking about how science needs to be reproducible, falsifiable, and testable on demand. But the Big Bang itself isn't testable. So if we can't recreate that, if we can't recreate one of the fundamentals of science, we need to be humble with anything that we explore. Because when it comes down to it, apparently nobody has any f***ing clue what's going on. Both explorations, whether it be spiritual or scientific, are full of paradoxes. I've said many times on this channel that I, I don't know where I'm at with faith. Some have said that we're just meat bags on a space rock. Perhaps it's that or thought programs in a God machine. But maybe we're just jazz particles in quantum clouds. And if that's the case, why do I get mad when Chipotle's out of guac? So why is this book being included in book therapy? Because both science and religion, the exploration of that has brought me to the same point. Whether it be awareness through spirituality or the self or quantum nodes and links, it's all this amazing web of fields in the space-time of reality of this simulation of whatever this is that we're experiencing. 
And we don't know what that is, but that's what makes it precious and amazing. So we can make with this reality whatever we want. With reading a book like this, it brings you back to the fact that we don't know anything, that what we're experiencing is some sort of miracle. Reality is not what it seems. And that's something I wanna tap into more often. Thank mm -hmm. you.